Hello, my name is John Wright. I wanted to talk to you about my good brass embouchure checklist that I've come up with as a result of uh, studying a lot of different people and reading and just my own experiences. Um, the first thing that you want to have is just an open yawning sensation like oh, and I'm opening up the inside of my mouth, dropping the tongue to the bottom of my mouth and I'm using my muscles to expand my throat and to just get this rich warm sound um, to where it's I can feel this resonance taking place. The second thing is I want my teeth aligned and spread apart. Now the teeth alignment thing, I got uh, that from The Art of Brass Playing by Philip Farkas. Uh, I don't get any kickbacks from this. I mean, it's just a book I've read and uh, it's a fantastic book where French horn player uh, Philip Farkas goes into all the brass instruments basically and uh, he studies different brass players. And he, but uh, that alignment process, you basically thrust your uh, lower jaw forward to get your teeth aligned. That's super important and you'll see more and more about why that's important as we go along. But uh, you want your teeth aligned and you want them spread apart. And you might be saying, well, how far should they be spread apart? Well, if you're a trumpet player or a French horn player, you want them spread apart about the distance of a pinky between your teeth. All right, that's so that they're aligned and they're spread apart. And of course, I'm beginning that note with a ta, a ta, or if I play a high note, so I'd be saying T. We'll get to more of that later on. But uh, same thing on the French horn, just but I'm, they're spread that far apart. For trombone, basically what you want to use, or baritone, you want to use a thumb distance, your flat thumb, just like this, like that to where you can get a, they're aligned and they're, they're spread apart. And I'll also sometimes take my tongue and use it and make sure to check between my lips just to make sure that my lips are spread apart enough. See, I'll pull my, you'll see me pull my lips apart. <laughs> and on the trumpet, any brass instrument, the lips, when you put them in the mouthpiece, they're not touching. My lips are apart uh, by a good quarter of an inch, even maybe a little bit more than that. See, I just, I did just naturally. My jaws forward, my teeth are aligned straight up and down. And, uh, and I began the note with a da, a, a da tongue on the trombone. This is my tenor trombone mouthpiece. And like I said, a, a thumb distance between, and you can bring in a little bit more. These are my bass trombone mouth. Uh, this is my tenor trombone mouthpiece, but it's a large shank uh, for a bigger tone. And uh, of course, this is my bass trombone mouthpiece, a 1G. I use a 4G on my tenor trombone, and uh, this is sort of like a six and a half AL. This is my first fifth grade beginning band trombone that I use. It's like a six, like I said, a six and a half AL, about that size. And this is a, a 18 Vincent Bach tuba mouthpiece. But for the tuba, like I said, the trombone uh, mouthpiece, you want your teeth spread about a, a, a thumb's distance, like so, with your lips spread apart as well. The tuba, basically, you ba basically twist that thumb sideways and this the thumb the pinky dance distances i got that off from james burke uh, who's the band director at north raleigh christian academy here in north carolina but a uh, great band director but that's how far they should be so you want your teeth aligned and you want them separated um, and spread apart uh, the third thing is while attempting higher notes there's several things you want to be aware of that you don't want to do you never want to mash your lips together. Like I said, my, teeth, my lips are apart inside the mouthpiece. So you never want to mash your lips together because you'll get this sputtering, uh, pinched sound that's very unpleasant to listen to and it'll always tend to be sharp. As you pinch higher and you're going up higher and higher, you're going to be pinching sharp. And uh, so every time you're playing in your high register, the band director will say, pull out. And when you play it in your low register, uh, he's going to say, push back in. So it's going to be a never ending uh, struggle there. So you never want to pinch your lips together and you never ever want to do what I did as a fifth grader, uh, which is smiling, doing it using a smile embouchure because you're basically pulling the corners of your mouth back and you're stretching all that muscle and that lip tissue really thin and, it's, and you, you're, it makes it difficult because uh, instead of focusing your muscles inward, you're stretching everything out. It's like doing push-ups with your hands way out here. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your uh, hands right below your shoulders. So it's the same thing. You want to keep your the corners of your mouth, you know, firm. If anything, they could maybe come in a little bit. But uh, so you don't want to 
like I said, you don't want to mash your lips together. You don't want to uh, smile to get a smile embouchure because uh, that's never going to, you're always going to be weak as you play that way. The fourth thing I want to cover uh, is a concept I got really from Charlie Porter. Uh, he basically said that uh, the way to go for high notes is to think about your teeth as a fretboard of say like a violin. And uh, I'm sorry I'm missing my A string. It just broke a little bit. I haven't had a chance to change it yet. Uh, but uh, imagine your teeth as the fretboard and your lips are the string. So if I start a, a note and I move, I start to tighten up that, uh, these lips, pretend these strings are your lips. As I, as I firm the string up against the fretboard, it's a less, there's a smaller and smaller vibrating surface, so the pitch goes up. It's the same thing. Your, your teeth are like this, this. Here's your teeth, and there's your lips vibrating. As you firm your lips up against that teeth, the vibrating surface becomes shorter and sur shorter, making the frequency higher, and uh, which brings the pitch up. And at the same time, so think about that again. I mean, that's the best explanation I've ever heard about what's actually taking place. Now, there's several things that take place to create a higher pitch. Uh, that's one of them. The second thing is like a, what Arben would say, who wrote this book. Uh, and I, Again, I'm not getting any kickbacks from this, but uh, it's a fantastic book and the things that he wrote. Um, they both would say that, you know, you're going to arc the back of the tongue. And what that does, like I said, ta-yi, what that does is the air has to travel over a greater distance. You're putting the same, you want to increase your air speed just from the diaphragm, but you also want to give it a longer distance to travel by ch channeling that air over the center of the tongue to say, like a hissing kind of a sound to make the air move really fast. And of course, that faster moving air will cause the lip to vibrate faster, but you do it with a, in combination with what I said about the, 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 the violin, your, your teeth are like the fretboard, your lips are the, are the, the strings. You want to do all these together. Faster airstream, arc the back of the tongue for higher notes, and then you want to firm up your lips up against those teeth to create a higher frequency. So all of those things working together, those three main things, uh, will create those higher pitches. So I'll, I'll do that on just a 4G uh, trombone mouthpiece. I'm, I'm going to arc the back of my tongue, I'm going to increase the airspeed, and I'm going to uh, firm my lips up against the teeth, both the upper and lower lips against the teeth. Listen to this. Um, James Burke, the band director at North Raleigh Christian Academy, uh, for a long time, at the beginning of when he's starting his sixth graders, he has them uh, just use mouthpieces only, and for good reason. This is a lot to think about. Like, just think of what I've covered so far. There's a lot going on, and you don't want, when students, you know, are sitting in front of their friends, they're going to latch on to just anything that produces any kind of sound. As, I, as a fifth grader, I latched on to the smile technique to go for higher notes, and then I latched and it became a habit real quickly in that room of 68 students in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, with Miss Godfrey, our band director. She's a great band director, but, you know, she couldn't see everything going on. So, you know, you want to be very careful and really observe what's taking place in all those little embouchures if you're a band director. But uh, like those, those three things, you want to uh, firm the lips up against the teeth. And to go low, for low notes, basically, you're just relaxing. This is from Charlie Porter. You're just relaxing uh, the lips away from the teeth, okay? So high notes, firming them up to the uh, teeth. Then you relax for low notes. And, of course, those other two things of arcing the back of the tune, tongue, faster airstream. And... Uh, Number five, and you might want to use a mirror, you do need to use a mirror, uh, to look at your embouchure as you're firming up your lips up against the teeth and flex that. And you want to think, and you're aligning your teeth, you should see this um, U-shaped uh, flat space underneath your lips right there, your lower lip, to where it's like you're, you're flexing. You remember, maybe you remember the movie uh, Megamind. He had this pointed chin. You want to imagine that you've got a little goatee, and you want to make it even longer, right? So you're going to flex the, keep it aligned, and you want to flex the, the, this all this up against the teeth. And you and uh, um, of course, Philip Farkas would say you should see uh, this little U-shaped pattern underneath, and that's from page 18 out of this book. Um, you want to see that and avoid. Uh, he would also say avoid bunching the chin. Sometimes I'll see. I'm thinking of a French horn player right now. He kind of bunches his chin like that, kind of mashing them all like that, and it kind of gets this little peach dimpled look 
underneath on his chin. You know, you want everything bunched, uh, I mean, not bunched, but flat against the teeth. And um, number six, obviously puffing your cheeks. Uh, you know, you've heard band directors, we've always said, don't puff your cheeks. Well, the, the main reason for that is because that defeats the whole process of firming up the lips against the teeth, the, the lips against that fretboard of the teeth. So you want to make sure you don't puff your cheeks because if you, if you do puff your cheeks, the only thing that you have left to go for high notes is uh, basically mashing your lips together, which will create a sputtering sound that will go sharp and or using pressure. So you, you don't want to pinch and you don't want to push the mouthpiece against your, your, uh, your face. And finally, um, embouchure development. Uh, trumpet player uh, Kurt Thompson says that, uh, you know, it's just this time consuming process of developing these muscles right here. Just time with the mouthpiece on your face, thinking about the correct way to do things. And, uh, but it's a time consuming process of developing these muscles, particularly in the chin area. Uh, but all of it really, you're, 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 as you're playing, the, the tendency is, is trying to, the air is trying to blow out and you're having to focus and, and hold that in and keep maintain that embouchure, that opening that you've got. So, and how much, this is one last thing I need to say. Um, this is something that's uh, mentioned by, again, Philip Farkas and also uh, Arben in his book. He, uh, uh, Arben talks about the trumpet and the French horn embouchures, you know, the high and the mid-range brass for uh, that. But then, of course, uh, Farkas addresses all the low brass and he studies embouchures of a lot of great um, uh, brass players of his time. But uh, for the trumpet, uh, pretty much uniformly across the board, everyone plays that's a great brass player. They play with uh, uh, one third of their upper lip in the mouthpiece and two thirds of their lower lip in the mouthpiece. And I had always, since I'm a trombone player, I had done the opposite. I'd always played with uh, two thirds of the upper lip in the mouthpiece and just one third in the bottom. But uh, trumpet, I've been trying this on the trumpet and it's really, I was like, wow. So you wanna use just uh, one third of the upper lip on the trumpet in the mouthpiece and two thirds of the bottom, and which will give you a tremendous uh, range and a lot of uh, control and be able to do a lot of jumps. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, for the trumpet, French horn is just the opposite. Uh, you wanna use, to get that veiled uh, French horn sound, covered sound that they want, you wanna use two thirds, and this is pretty much unanimous with all trumpet player, great trumpet players and French horn players, they pretty much all use two thirds of the upper lip, one third of the lower lip uh, for the French horn. Trombone and baritone, uh, it's kind of a toss up. Different people do different things according to their, the shape of their lips. Uh, for instance, I have a large upper lip. It's great for great tone quality. It's not so great for high notes. And uh, it's certainly terrible for, I got a Cupid's bow. It kind of comes down in a point in the very top. Great for tone, low, low notes and uh, tone quality, but uh, high range on the flute, you can't play flute very well on that with that. But um, for trombone, uh, it goes half, I've seen great players uh, play with uh, two thirds of the upper lip in, one third of the bottom, and then just the opposite like a trumpet player does. And so it kind of depends on how your mouth is made. You just kind of have to, to experiment with that and uh, see what works best for you. And uh, of course, tuba, uh, you're kind of limited because you got a nose and uh, that nose kind of gets in the way. And so you don't have a whole lot of room. You, and some people do have a large distance between your nose and your, your lip and opening, your mouth if you're opening. But you wanna basically just play around with that and get what, what you have a lot of control to, to do. So uh, hopefully all of these things will uh, help you to see some of the things I've been discovering. Uh, as I've been really trying to d decide and help little kids, uh, sixth graders, try to learn how to play their instrument a little bit better uh, to where they understand what they're doing from the very beginning. It's super important to really just focus on just the mouthpiece only as you're playing uh, to see, because you don't want to develop a bad habit. You want to set yourself up to where, because there is a right way to play the brass instruments and there's a lot of wrong ways. So you want to just do the right way and save yourself so much time. Don't do it the way I did it. Uh, make sure you're, you're focusing and doing it the correct way so it'll be a lot easier uh, to, to be successful in what you're doing.